Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Scott from MusculoStrength.com, and today I want to talk to you about an exercise called the Seated Barbell Curl. Now, I've mentioned this exercise in the past, but it was in my video called something like the dumbest exercises I see in the gym. So you already know my thought process on this movement. But after I made that video, quite a few of you reached out to me, and you're like, Scott, Jim Stepani talks about this exercise as being really good for biceps growth, and a few other channels have mentioned this exercise being good for biceps growth as well. And although I'm against it, I'm very open-minded. In fact, the only reason why my channel has grown to where it is today is because I am open-minded and I like listening to my community because a lot of you are very smart and I appreciate that. So I did some digging, did some research, I watched Jim's video, and I actually came to uh, a conclusion that I did not expect to come to. And we'll get to that in a second. But first, for those of you who enjoy my content and you want to digest it in article form with cool photos and videos and all that combined in one, download my app, Muscular Strength. It's free to download. You can go to the article section. And chances are, if you go there now, you'll probably see the article version of this video there. So make sure you check that out. But getting back to the exercise first, let me just make it very clear from the beginning of this video. No other exercise is going to replace your standard barbell curl, all right? A half rep in my book is still a half rep. Now, the hottest part of a biceps curl is the sticking point, which is the bottom position, where you go from basically fully extended arms, triceps flexed, and then to here. This is the hottest part of the curl. This is where your biceps engage. It's the weakest point. And so for me, I don't really feel like I'm getting a good biceps workout unless I engage from the bottom and then flex and squeeze all the way up like this, all right? Doing curls like that doesn't make sense to me because you're skipping the sticking point. So initially, my thought process was, if I think this is bad, why would I think this is okay, right? It would make me a hypocrite. It would basically just make me like a Gymshock athlete, you know, not really knowing much about what I'm talking about. So what is the difference and what did Jim Stepani have to say? Jim Stepani is a very smart gentleman. He has a PhD, super smart, makes great videos. And so one of the things that he was talking about when he was demonstrating the exercise is how a lot of times when you're doing biceps curls, you know, standard biceps curls, your brachyradialis and your brachialis starts to fatigue before your biceps do. And when that happens, you're not able to really fully exhaust your biceps because you've gotten too fatigued in your brachialis and brachyradialis, or brachyradialis and brachialis, so you're not able to do as many reps, is basically what he gets to. And I feel like there is some truth to that, um, but it's not for everyone. For example, when you're a beginner, and I'm sure for those of you who are beginners now, or maybe you're a seasoned lifter, but you still remember what it's like back in the day when you just started training, what usually happens when you're doing exercises is you tend to fatigue the muscle groups that are furthest away from your body first before you get to the ones you're trying to target. So what I mean by that is if you're bench pressing as a beginner and you're trying to target your chest, chances are your triceps and your shoulders are fatiguing way before your chest does. Or if you're doing a biceps curl and you're trying to target your biceps, chances are that your forearm and your grip is fatiguing before you fatigue your biceps. Or if you're trying to train back and you're doing heavy rows, your forearm grip and your biceps are probably fatiguing before your back does. That's just what happens when you're a beginner. But over time, as you get stronger and you build mind-muscle connection and you're able to focus on the areas you're trying to train and utilize techniques that you've adapted to over the course of time, doing a biceps curl now, whether I'm doing super heavyweight or lightweight, my grip and forearms don't fatigue before my biceps do. I'm able to fully target my biceps and figure it out. So I feel like there's some truth to that, but also some mistruths because it doesn't apply to everyone. So another thing he talks about in his video, and this is where the light bulb went off for me, all right? Another thing he talks about is how you're not supposed to bring the bar to your knees and biceps curl from here. And I feel like a lot of people who do the barbell biceps curl, that's what they're doing. They're curling from here. And this is not the correct way to perform the exercise. Jim actually talks about holding the barbell as close to your body as possible and doing a drag curl and dragging the barbell up your chest to here and then returning back to the starting position. 
And he also talks about how this allows you to focus more on the outside head of your bicep, which is true. In fact, I've made videos in the past talking about barbell drag curls as a way to work on the peak of your bicep because it targets the outside head. And this is where it clicked. It's the exercise shouldn't be called a seated barbell curl. It should be called a modified drag curl. And I'll explain why. Whenever I do drag curls, to be honest with you, I don't really like the exercise because as I try to go heavier with the weight, what usually ends up happening to me and probably a lot of you is instead of being able to maintain the strict posture where I bring the weight up like this to the top and then go back down, what ends up happening is as I pull my elbows back, I start to elevate my shoulders and I tend to engage a bit more delts and traps as I'm trying to bring the weight up. It just happens while you're fatigued. So unless you're doing moderate to light weight and you're able to really focus on that perfect form the entire way up or down, what tends to happen is this, all right? So if you do it the seated version, you skip that whole initial phase of just trying to get the weight to the proper position to do the curl to target that outside head. If you do it seated, sit up straight, keep your core nice and tight, pull it into here, you're already set to do the drag curl and focus on the most important part of that range of motion, which actually is from the waist to the top part of the position. But again, this is more, I wouldn't call it an advanced movement, but this exercise is more something you would use if you've been bodybuilding for a while and you need to try something new to get more growth on your peak. If you're a beginner, you just want to grow and you will grow pretty much no matter what you do. So it's in your best interest to do exercises that are going to allow you to really maximize your time. This exercise focuses on the peak or the outside head of your biceps. Chances are, if you're beginning, you need the inside head and outside head to grow. So your best bet is to do a standard barbell curl and hit both heads at the same time and focus on overloading. And even if you are an advanced athlete, you can still focus on techniques like my Cheat and Recover, which if you guys haven't seen my Cheat and Recover program, it's one of the best programs you'll ever try for overloading and busting through a plateau, whether it's in strength or muscle gains. But typically, you're doing your, your barbell curls, you're about 40% stronger in the eccentric portion of your reps, which basically means you'll never be able to curl up what you can actually handle on the way down. And so my cheat reps are basically using a bit of momentum, thrusting the weight up, and then getting yourself locked in place, keep your core tight, and then fighting the negative on the way down. You get the most muscle breakdown in the negative, you're also strongest in the negative, so it makes more sense to overload the negative than to sit down with lighter weight and just focus on the outside head. So, do I still think it's a really dumb exercise, as my thumbnail implies? Now that I've done a bit more research and I figured out its proper use, I really don't, guys. I think that if you use the exercise as intended, as a modified drag curl to hit the outside head of your biceps, I think it's a great exercise to do, but only after you've pre-exhausted your biceps with exercises that really work like a standard barbell curl or a dumbbell curl, fully extending at the bottom, then maybe go over here and work on that outside head if it's a lagging area. If you guys enjoy my no BS ways or approach to training, let me know by tapping that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, go ahead and subscribe. Click that notification bell, but notification bell works like 10% of the time. So if you took my advice and you downloaded my app, chances are you already got notified that this article has been put up with the video. And for me to be able to reach out to you guys directly, is a lot better for all of us. So, hope you guys enjoyed the vid. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I wasn't kidding. If you need a program that's guaranteed to help push you through a muscle building or strength plateau, you have got to try my Cheat and Recover program. You can see the entire program by clicking the link below and downloading my app. Everything you need to make sure you know exactly what to do when you go to the gym.